Hello everybody and welcome to the Ben and Boz Microsoft Excel video tutorial series. I am Boz. I'm Ben. What's going on today, man? It is still a beautiful day in college. I swear every day is a beautiful day up here. We love it. We love it. We're just hanging out. We're hanging out in a garage recording some videos. What do you love more, Excel or Collegeville? I love them both equally. <laughs> <laughs> like your children trying to pick. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, today, uh, as far as the goals about what we're going to be getting into, Ben, in the last video, taught you how to do some copying and pasting. I'm going to take it to another level. We're going to learn a little bit about data validation as well as how to navigate between sheets and an Excel file. Yeah, these are actually some really good specific shortcuts moving to the following Excel worksheet and the previous Excel worksheet, copying the contents from the cell above. That's a little control D action. Copying contents from cell to the left is a little control R action and a little data validation is extremely useful. Not necessarily going to use it every day, but when you need it, it helps a ton. A powerful tool. There you go. To start off, the, the one that we want to show is just moving between Excel worksheets. And you can see the, the shortcuts right there, control page up, control page down. And what that means is that if I want to get between my different uh, sheets within my single Excel file here, I don't have to click on them uh, individually. I can actually navigate with a keyboard. Uh, we encourage you, whenever possible, use a keyboard as compared to your mouse. And something interesting with the keyboard that you're using, on some keyboards you can just hit control and page up or control and page down. On the keyboard that you're using right now, you also have to hit the FN or the function key as well. Yep. So it's control function and page up and page down. Yep. And it's just different depending on the keyboard. So if you try control page up or page down, it doesn't work for you, then use the function key as well. Yep, just look for something else so on the keyboard. Hopefully most of your keyboards just have a control page up and you do it. So right now I'm just hitting the equivalent of a control page up and it's toggling through my file and uh, I'm now hitting the equivalent excuse me I was hitting control page down and it was toggling through my file now I'm hitting the equivalent of control page up and it's toggling through my file you know not a huge deal but if you're constantly going back and forth uh, again it'll save you a few seconds of time over the long run uh, you're really gonna save yourself a lot of time and I've worked with an Excel file with over a hundred sheets in it before. So really to be able to navigate there uh, quick, n navigate through there quickly. Absolutely. Uh, I should use this one more than I do, but yep. say you're working with like employee data and each employee has their own tab or maybe their own tab is a timesheet. It's, mm -hmm. it can get pretty big. Yeah. So anyways, that's, we, we taught you the first couple right there. So navigating between them. Now the next thing that we want to do is you're just looking and you see a trial balance here. All right, and we've, we've got uh, an unadjusted trial balance and then it's, um, it's, it's got amounts in it. We don't have totals in there yet. We then have an adjustments column and then an adjusted trial balance. Now frequently a company will make its journal entries uh, in a separate area so that's where in our third sheet in our file here we have something called adjusting entries and we are going to make our entries there but then link them back into the trial balance. Sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Do, do you have a favorite, uh, you can look at the chart of accounts here Ben, uh, do you uh, have a favorite journal entry that you might want to make? Just Let, let's do a little AR. Let's, let's accrue some revenue here. You're going to accru accrue some revenue, basically. All mm -hmm. right. So we've got, I just want to make sure we have the, uh, those accounts on there. So we've got <laughs> revenue. We have accounts receivable. So how much revenue do you want to accrue? So the baseline is this company has 98000 of revenue. $23,000. $23,000. Yes, I want to accrue $23,000 worth of revenue. All right. In order to do that, I see you navigate. You did that really fast, switching sheets. I didn't even catch that. So Absolutely. in order to do that, let's go ahead and debit accounts receivable. So normally what people would do is they would just type in like accounts receivable right here. All right. See, I'm not so good at spelling though. Okay, so we could misspell it. We okay. could misspell it. We could have an issue there. That's right. Or what, what are you going to credit? Revenue. All right, so Renavu. Is that how you spell it? Right that there? is not at all how you spell it, but I appreciate it. We'll roll with it. And people are like, what are these guys doing? Well, there's a method to our madness here, mm -hmm. right? Um, and what we are going to use as a result of this one is the data validation techniques. And to, to do data validation, what we want to do is allow us to only select from our chart of accounts. All right, so we want to select only from these possible accounts right here. So as I do that, I am going to go to data. And this is one, there are shortcuts to this. Um, I usually just click on it because I don't do it a whole lot, right? So I, I could certainly use the alt key to find the shortcuts, but uh, 
Is that kind of your view too, Ben? Yeah, We're not gonna I agree. Overdo the shortcuts. Alt um, and then D to get to the data tab, and mm -hmm. then you can kind of go from there. But yep. it's probably just faster how few times you actually use it. Yep. To this isn't one of through. the shortcuts we think you need to commit to memory as much. But just go data, and then over to data validation right here. You could either click on it or the drop down box. Click data validation, and now you can do things. We're going to show you different validations uh, throughout this whole series, but what we want to do right here is to allow a list. And we're going to allow a list and our source. We're going to click in this box to kind of get it uh, alive, and then we're going to go to our trial balance, click on cache, and then how would you highlight all these cells here? I would do control shift and then the down arrow control to shift, highlight down all of them. Arrow. And then I would hold the shift key and do up arrow once. Perfect. Because I don't want to get the total okay. in there. Okay, control shift, down arrow, and now keep the shift key held down, but release the control mm -hmm. arrow key up once. And now I have my, I basically have my chart of accounts highlighted. There you go. And I'll do uh, an okay on top of that one. So now when I'm right here, as opposed to actually having to type in accounts receivable and debit that, um, I can just select it and I can type in my debit amount of $23,000. Now, I could have just you know, done this data validation on both columns at the same time. That's what I would have done in the real world, but we'll just show them it again just by highlighting on the B, data, data, okay, data, and my data validation right over here. I want to once again allow a list, click in my source, go to my trial balance. I'm at the bottom this time. <laughs> Uh oh, what are you going to do now? <laughs> I'm going to do a control shift up arrow key, and then I'm going to release the control, right? Release yep. the control, but keep the shift held down, and then, you know, just highlight the, the range. And th that, that one's pretty risk free. If you mess it up and you accidentally <laughs> highlight the wrong thing, well, you just start over, and it's not that big of a deal. It's a good point. It's a good point. So we'll go OK on this one. And now, you know, what, what I can show right here is I can certainly hit my my drop down box and I can then go go find revenue. All right, that certainly works. I'll control Z out of that for a second. I, I can type it in still and it's a nice little check. So if I type it and I spell it correctly, it works. You get that validation on your spelling. That's right. But if I do what I did before, Renovu, it rejects it. So uh oh yeah. What, what if you retry it? If I retry it and try to spell it wrong again? Yeah, would it work then? Renevevev. Nope, it, <laughs> no, doesn't, it work doesn't work that time. Either. All right. And I think I bumped the uh, bumped that in the background. All there right. you go. We'll get off of this. All right, so I'll just go ahead and then I will I've got revenue equals the twenty three thousand. Perfect. And then one more just uh, adjusting entry. You've got kind of your list of your chart of accounts. Let's here. do prepaid insurance. Say we used up some of that. How much of the seven grand do you want to use up? Uh, six thousand nine hundred and fourteen dollars. All right, we're going to do that because we can do whatever Ben wants. Pretty Thank much. you. Yep. Perfect. So I will go ahead uh, right here. And oh, it's interesting. My data validation, I don't know what I did. You just I, had it in cell uh, A3 the first time that oh. you went through it, not the entire column of A, which is kind of cool because mm -hmm. if you only want your validation in, in just a like cell. a certain cell, yeah. you can just put it for that one cell. And that could be useful. Say you want a different list yeah. or something for different areas. Yep. In this case, it's good for the entire column. So you can go ahead and show them how to do data validation one more time. So I'll click the whole A, I'll go to data validation. It says it contains some, do I want to extend it? Well, sure, go ahead and uh, extend it to the whole row. Now I've got my list and it's interesting. It asked me if I want to extend that rule to the whole columns. That so you don't have to cool. go back, find the list. Don't have to stress do about again. selecting the right, <laughs> right accounts and not too many cells or too few. And it just right. populates automatically. All right, so here we're doing prepaid insurance. What should I debit for that one? Definitely insurance expense. Yep, definitely. Whoops, and I got to click it again right here. There you go. All right, and then my credit. Credit is going to be prepaid insurance. Do you remember? Nailed it. Do you remember the $6,914. That's what I remembered. I was going to see if you were going to remember the same thing. I wasn't sure if it was 100%, <laughs> but I figure close enough, it right? doesn't matter. I've got it typed in there in this cell. I will link to that. And that's solely so that if we'd made a mistake and that should have been only 6000 I just have to do that once and it updates uh, in the other place. I'll control Z out of that one. 
And now all I'm going to do is, is go and link that into my trial balance. So accounts receivable. So we accrued some. So I'm going to type in equals right here. And now I'm going to do uh, my, page, um, uh, my page down to, to go to my adjusting entries. Go ahead and click on accounts receivable of that 23000 for my credit to revenues equals, and now I will go down and click on that 23,000 for revenues. Is this how you would just be doing it this, as well, Ben? This is how I would be doing it. Okay. Um, there's certainly other, other ways you could do it, but I think it's good to show that you can link to other cells in different sheets. Sure. That actually saves you a ton of time when you have four or five sheets. Say you have a, just like a general journal mm -hmm. linking to your general ledger and then you have totals from the general ledger linking to this trial balance. Yep. And that way you just changed one thing in your general journal and it all the way updates through your ledger Absolutely. and into the trial balance. You don't have to make sure to change it in every place afterwards. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll do one of those at the end with just as much as, as we have done. Uh, my last one goes to prepaid insurance. Now I've got my adjusting entries in there. Did you get insurance expense in there? I hope so. I, think I just I got carried away I I talking. That's probably talking, what it was. Yeah, yeah so good. Just, well done. Yeah, I've just linked to all those. All right, now I want to sum up a column. I got to put a total in here. What should I do? What have we taught them so far? Alt equals would be my go-to right now. Alt equals. Wait, it, did, it didn't select everything. What are you going to do? Well, what I usually do, and tell me if you would do it any differently. So I hit alt equals. My hands are currently off. Now I manually go with the keys and then I would hit a control shift up arrow key and I would just kind of hit that a couple times and um, now I actually get rid of my control and keep down my shift and just kind of navigate until I have yep. captured what I need to capture. So exactly. I think once in a while I'll be, a, be a, just a tick clunky that way. That's I think exactly when, what I would do. All right, so then I hit enter. Now what would you, there's, okay, what, what would be some things I should not do in this next cell right here? Uh, should you I should not, not hit equals okay. and then redo exactly what we Don't just did Don't or any it. sort of click on one and then plus. Yep. You definitely should not enter all these into your calculator and then just type in mm -hmm. the number right there either. Yep. Now, what did we teach them last video that would be a very reasonable solution here? Perfect. So if you went over to B19 and you did yep. control C yep. and then went over to C19 and hit enter or control V, yep. that would automatically add it all up. You'd be good to go. Yep. We could, we could totally do that. What I like to do and I Wait, like one, to do? I love to do it. There it's one go. of my favorite. I think it's, I love it because I learned it in India back in August of 2014. One of my students in India taught this to me. As opposed to doing both the control C and the control V, I actually can just highlight these together and hit control R. It's wow. a paste Ooh. to the right. Ah. So I love control R. And actually what I would normally do, because I'm going to try to sum up all these columns, is all at once I would just highlight this range of six cells. I would hit control R all at once. It's probably a quarter second faster than doing control C and control V. So over the course of my life, I'll save like two and a half hours and I'll use them taking a nap or something. But you'll die happy. <laughs> but I will absolutely. I love control R. and what, It uh, is a good one. It is pretty slick. Yep. I got in the habit more of control C and then I would just like shift over or hit enter. Mm -hmm. So that's one extra keystroke instead of yeah. doing just a control R. Yep. But it is pretty slick. I got to hand it to you. It's a good think, one. I don't think all the shortcuts existed like for our entire career. You know, I think Excel adds some. So sometimes you just get used to something, right? And then you just kind of do it and they add something new and it takes a while to get into it. But uh, what we do for the adjusted balance, you know, we've got a debit entry here. To, to simplify it, I'm just going to do equals the beginning balance. I'm going to add in any adjustments that are debits. I'm going to subtract out any adjustments that are credits. Now, normally, again, to get this down to these cells, what would you do, Ben? I would do a control C, yeah. and then I would hold the shift key and arrow down, Yep. and then I would hit enter. Yep, and hit enter or control V. That works out really, really slick. Now, just like there is a control R, there is also a control D. So I nice. could just highlight this range and as compa having to com compared to doing a control C and a control V or an enter, all I have to do is a control D. Just one thing. Saves That's me pretty that slick. Saves me that quarter second. Learned that one also in India. One student knew the control R and one knew the control D. So two of them helped me learn that. Smart um, move. Yeah. Now to get down to my other debits, I'm going to hit a control C on top of that. 
and then I will go down to cost of goods sold. I mean, here I have to do a control V. I mean, that's, I still use control C and control V a lot. Like right there, I couldn't do a control D, so I paste it down. But once I have it down there, now I'll just highlight this range, and I will just do a control D. And then Perfect. paste it down. Oh, it doesn't um, balance, though. <laughs> 161, 800, and zero. <laughs> zero. I hope when I sum up the credits, it, it balances. I guess we'll find out. Let's so, hope so. Yeah, so equals my beginning credit balance. I will add in my, um, my adjustments for my credits. I will subtract out my adjustments for my debits. Most of those are blank, but we're just putting the template because the reality is this company would have more adjusting entries. I will then just go to paste this down over the rest of my credit balances. And again, I'm going to use the control D feature in order to do that. So just highlight the range and it pastes that formula down and it now balances. Oh, so. A little nervous, holding my breath there for a second. <laughs> That's right. And all I wanted to show them, you know, why we should link between, you know, if we did something extreme and I'm, I, I do an, ex I always do extreme things just so they pop so you can easily tell what changed. So we'll put like 10 million in for the adjusting entry we can now see that that all appeared to, to flow through. I guess last lesson, you know, we taught them a little trick. We, we, we Column can't, width. Yeah, we, we can't see it. We want to expand all the column widths. Um, so what was that shortcut I again? would go control A right now. Control A. And, and then just navigate up to any one of those, double click when you're between. Yep. Boom, there you go. And now we can see that the 10 million rolled through, it balances, that's why you That's some pretty sweet accrued way. revenue there. <laughs> that's awesome, accrued revenue. I'll do a couple of control Zs to undo that. And we are back, uh, back to where we, we began. We go to the instructions. Uh, yeah, we bounced around between Excel spreadsheets. We, we copied uh, with our control D and R. Uh, there is no control U or L uh, to go up or I to the I was thinking about asking, but I decided not to. That's right. Nope. But if you hit shift and enter together, it'll move up sometimes. Yeah, we can do it that way. And we use some data validation as well. Anything you want to say, man? This is some cool stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for tuning in to our lesson four of the Ben and Boz Excel tutorial series. We'll be back next time for lesson five. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you next time.